Hello everyone, and welcome to Slice Print Roleplay. So I wanted to start the video off tonight with a big thank you. Uh, my YouTube channel is growing, the Facebook community is growing, and I'm just getting some really cool feedback from my videos, and I'm just so happy to be a part of this community and part of this this hobby. Like I really love making my own models, I love playing D&D, and it's been a ton of fun, and the fact that I can help you guys by adding some value and, and helping you along your printing experience is, is really cool for me. So if there's anything that you guys need or want in the future, as far as videos or reviews or anything, definitely let me know. And if it is within my power or my knowledge, I will happily do it for you guys. All right, so segueing right along, tonight is a video that is by request. I was on one of the Facebook pages and somebody was asking about how to cut up a model, specifically to cut the head off, scale it up, and use it as a wall mount or a trophy. Now that's a really cool idea. It's actually something I've had knocking around on my head for a while now. I unfortunately haven't had time to get to it. So I'm gonna be doing a tutorial so that you guys can do it. But I do ask for one thing in return. If you guys check this out and this is something you guys wanna do, please, please join the Facebook group down below for uh, Slice Print Roleplay and post on there what you guys have done. Cause I'm super excited to do this, but I'm not gonna have time to do it for a while. So just, uh, you know, I humbly ask you, please, please post on there so I can vicariously live through you guys because it's gonna be a little while until I can get to this. I've got too many other projects going on right now. So obviously the first thing we're gonna need is a model. Now, the model that you pick is obviously important. What you're looking for is something that looks detailed and looks crisp at a tabletop size so that when you cut it and you blow it up, it's gonna still look good at that higher size. If you pick something that looks you know, okay or has some rough edges in a, you know, a tabletop size, when you cut that and you scale it up, all of the small imperfections or rough edges that it has are only gonna become more noticeable as you scale it up. So the model that I picked, is this awesome red dragon from Miguel Zavala. Now I might not be pronouncing the last name correctly. If I am, that's a freaking cool name, but if I'm not, definitely let me know because I'm not the best with names. So uh, Miguel has been a part of the 3D printing community for a while now, and he has done some really, really cool work. So he's, I, at this point, I think he's up to like 300 something models. They're all from the 5e Monster Manual. He may have done some other editions as well, but I know for sure a lot of the models that he has are from the 5e Monster Manual. They are free. They're on Thingiverse. They're awesome. Definitely, you know, all of that stuff will of course be down in the description below. But if you jump on there and you um, you like his models and you want to use them, please consider jumping onto his Patreon and, and you know, giving him just a dollar a month is a huge deal for people like this. They, they give so much to the community. And definitely, if you like his models and you want to give back to him because he's a, a really great guy, I highly recommend, like I said, supporting him on his Patreon. All right, so next thing we're going to do is we're going to open the model up in the Mesh Mixer. And of course, we're using Mesh Mixer because it is an awesome program. It's free. It's got a ton of cool features. And it's what I know, so it's what I teach. So if you guys want to follow along this, this tutorial you know, while I'm talking, while I'm doing it, I definitely recommend it. That's the best way to learn. So uh, get it, download it, and uh, open it up here. Uh, if you guys don't know where to get it, take a look at the description down below. Of course, I'll have it down there. Um, jump on it, and uh, like I said, try to follow along with this tutorial as we're going. So now that we have our model in here, what we're trying to do is we're trying to cut off basically everything but just the head. We're going to get rid of the whole body, the neck, the arms, everything. So what we're going to start with here, there are two different ways that we can cut models in Mesh Mixer. There is the easy but less precise way, and then there is the more precise but a slightly more difficult way that takes a little bit of practice. So we'll start with the easier way, and that is to, with the model selected, you're going to go to Plain Cut. Now it's exactly what it sounds like. Plane cut is gonna cut everything on whatever plane you leave this on. So you can see how it's highlighting model from end to end, it's gonna slice that whole thing off. You can see how the bottom is translucent, the top is solid. That means that the bottom half of this model is gonna get cut off and the top is gonna be left. If you wanted to just make a cut through the model, what you could do is change this to slice and keep both. Always make sure you have remesh full selected so that it, it makes a good slice and remeshes on either side of that cut. But we don't wanna do that on this one, we're just gonna to go to discard half. Now, if uh, for whatever reason you guys wanted to cut this model the other direction, you wanted to cut the bottom and um, you know, or leave the bottom and cut the top off, you can just swap this 180 degrees. Uh, right, where are my snap points? There they are. I was missing my snap points. They disappear when you go outside of them, so I was missing them. But these, uh, this ring here in the center, these are snap points. Makes it much easier to try to find a precise spot. So there you go. If you switch this around, you'll see that now the top is shaded and the bottom solid. So we don't want to do that. We want to cut off the top. So we're going to go to uh, Control Z. That's going to go back. So anytime you guys make a boo boo and you want to go back, just hit Control Z. What we're going to try to do here is we're going to go up to his head. Now, I want to keep those chin spikes because they're really cool looking. So I want to get as close to it as I can without going too far. Let's go about right there. Hit accept. Okay, looks pretty good. Didn't lose any detail on those. Didn't get too close. So that looks good. I like that. 
So now we're going to do the wings the same way. We're going to go to plane cut. We're going to turn this 90 degrees using those snap points. There's 90. And now, like I said, make sure you pay attention to the orientation of the plane cut tool. So the right side is translucent, the left side is solid. That means if I move this over here, I'm not going to be cutting this wing off. I'm going to be leaving this wing and cutting everything on the left side off. So we're going to go over here. We're going to make that cut. Okay, so you see how on this um, frill, I guess it would be? I don't know, I failed Dragon Biology. But this, uh, we'll call it a frill for now. Um, it See how it kind of got highlighted? That means that when Mesh Mixer made that cut, it was a little too close, and it thinks that it might have nicked it. It's possible. It doesn't look like it, but it might have just been just a little too close. So we're going to hit Control-Z, and we're going to move this a little bit closer to that wing, and then hit Accept. All right, problem solved. So we're going to do the same thing to cut the other wing off. We're going to go to Plane Cut, turn this 90 degrees towards the head, and we're going to move this over, hit Accept. Okay, so now we're having the problem on the other side. So it kept too much of that wing. So we're just going to Control-Z, move a little bit closer to the head. There we go. All right, so now we've had successfully cut the wings off, and we have just the head. So before we go any further, I'm going to show you guys the more precise way of making cuts, because I think that using one of these horns is going to be a, a great template to kind of show that to you. So let's say you were trying to cut up this model to make it fit more with a, like a narrative that you were trying to fit. So let's say you wanted to cut one of his horns off because in your D&D campaign, maybe one session is uh, you know trying to help the dragon find his broken horn, which sounds like an episode of Dragon Tales, but if that's your campaign, that actually sounds like a lot of fun, so hit me up, I might be interested in joining. But So let's say that that's the idea of your uh, you know one session, you want to have a, a broken horn on this dragon. So. You're not going to be able to use a plane cut tool on this because if you try, you're going to be cutting everything from his horn back. You know, if you go to the center here, it's going to cut all this off. Even if you try to angle it, you're going to have all kinds of frustrations with that. So if you want to cut just one part of a model, what you can do is with the model highlighted or selected, you can go over to the select tool. Now we're going to want it to be pretty small. So I'm going to say I'm going to go to like five here. And six is close enough. Now what you want to do is you want to try to find an angle where there is as little background as possible for this model so or for the area that you're trying to click on what i mean by that is if i were trying to select this horn here on his head i wouldn't want to do something like this because you can see i'm going to select everything behind that as well or uh, again this is like a a bill on his back back of his head going down his neck i don't know if, if you guys know more about dragon biology you can feel free to let me know school me on that because i want to know i want to learn but i don't have it in front of me so i'm going to call it a bill for now so if you wanted to just select that one spot, you would want to do something more like this. So you can see in this orientation, there is nothing behind it. There's nothing in my way. So if I wanted to make that selection, I would do this. There. So now there's nothing else selected except for that one area that I want. So again, going back to that horn analogy, if we wanted to just select that horn, we would probably do something like this. And I would want to go like that. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, if we go to edit and uh, then go to plain cut, now when we go to cut this, we're only cutting the area that we have selected. And we want to spin this around because we want to keep the back side and cut the front off. So I'm going to go like right there, I think. Now, if you guys, uh, I don't know if, how well you're going to see it. I think if I get on this angle here, you can see. Okay, so uh, whenever you make a selection like this, be careful you don't get too close to the area that you selected. And the reason is you can see how it goes from a clean cut all of a sudden it's going to jump. There we go. So it gets kind of unclean here because it can't make a clean edge. Because sometimes when you make a selection on a model like this, it does the best that it can, but it doesn't quite get all the pixels perfect. And sometimes you're going to have jagged edges and then the program can't quite fill that back in. Usually that's not a huge issue. Um, when you bring it into your, your next slicer, it should be able to fill that in without any issues. But if you want to have a clean edge, just bring it back a little ways behind your selection and it should find a spot that it can make a clean edge, like that. So hit accept, and there you go. Now you have a dragon that's got a cut off horn, and you don't have to worry about fiddling with that, um, you know, the plane cut tool on its own and have to deal with it being just kind of a big wrecking ball that cuts everything in its way. But let's say you didn't want that cut, hit control Z, control Z again. Well, it's just gonna move around because we did all those little movements. But from here, you can just hit cancel, cancel again, and there you go, the horn's back. So Control-Z is definitely super helpful anytime you guys think you might want to might go back because you made a boo-boo. All right, so this model is almost done, but the way that it is right now, 
the bottom part, the flat part of this model that would sit on a, uh, like a plaque or a base on the wall, it's gonna end up making the model look directly at the floor. We don't really want that. So we're gonna use that plane cut tool again. I'm gonna turn this 90 degrees, or 290 degrees actually. Now what I'm gonna try to do here is I'm gonna try to get as close as I can to those horns without cutting them. So probably about right there, I think. Let's see how that looks. Okay, horns are intact, got a nice cut, nice flat edge on the back. We kept that, that bill, those horns and these flanges intact. Or what did I say, it was frill, not, not flanges, it's frill. But I don't really necessarily like this, uh, the bottom part of his neck here, so I kinda wanna cut that off too. And again, we can't use plain cut for that because if we try, we're gonna end up cutting the bottom of his jaw off. So let's go into select and I'm gonna try to get closer here so I can make that selection. And I'm gonna try to go just under that area. Oh, so it was a little too close. Actually, it might be a little too big as well. Let's drop that to three. Okay, that's a little better. So let's see if I go to edit, plain cut, Okay, it looks like a pretty clean cut right there. Except, yeah, okay, I like that, looks pretty good. So now we've got our model cut, we've got it ready to put up on the wall, except it's still really teeny. This would look cool in a, you know, in a keep in D&D, but it's not gonna look great on your wall. So we wanna scale it up. So I'm gonna say, um, I just picked an Ender 3 as far as a build plate to use, just cause it's a, you know, it's a common build plate size. So I'm gonna click on it, I'm gonna to go to edit and transform, and I'm gonna put it at something with making sure that uniform scaling is selected. If otherwise, if you don't have that selected, it's gonna stretch the model out and make it look horrifying and not in a good way. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take it to, I'm thinking like we're gonna go 175 and see what that does. All right, it's pretty massive. Might be too big for the build plate or it might be just right. Let's see. So let's flip this up to where it's gonna be sitting flat, 90 degrees. That looks pretty good. So we're gonna hit accept. We're gonna to go to align under edit and it's gonna drop it down onto the build plate. And actually, I'm gonna to go to transform. I'm gonna turn it because I think if we did something like that, I think even with supports, that would fit on my build plate nicely on an ender three. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I would probably print it like this because a lot of the support material that you're gonna see on the back here, um, or a lot of the support material that's gonna leave marks back here, is gonna be hidden because this is gonna be up against the wall like that. So honestly, that's the orientation I would probably print this in as well. So yeah, there you go. That's how you can cut the head off a model, scale it up, print it out, and use it as a plaque for your wall. Now, I will be doing a uh, sort of a companion video to this one where I'll explain how to add alignment pins to something. So if you wanted to do like a decorative base on this and you wanted to be able to um, put it up against the wall and make it fit perfectly on the base like it does in Mesh Mixer, I can show you guys how to do that with alignment pins. But for now, for the sake of this video not getting super long, I'm gonna end it here. Um, if you guys like the video, found it helpful, please like and subscribe, it definitely helps me out. If you have any comments about the video, put them down below or jump on the Facebook page. Like I said, I'm always happy to see new people there. And uh, definitely, if you use this process, please post what you're working on. And uh, that's about it. All right, let's go print something.